Hello and uh, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and we will be working on the um, fairy in this video, which is really exciting. So I already cut out her, one of her legs <coughs> and uh, we're going to start um, putting it together. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I already prepared the cording for her little ballerina shoe. And if you... Um, if you're unfamiliar with making cording, I do have a separate video for that, so I'll link that for you. And um, I'm just going to use this chopstick here, and I'm going to stuff her little shoe here, and I'm going to just work my way up. And I like using a chopstick because there's two sides I can use. The skinnier side for smaller areas and the thicker side for larger areas. So right now I'm just trying to push in... A good amount of stuffing into this shoe here because I want it to be full. Okay, so I'm just showing you in real time um, because I get this question a lot about stuffing pieces like this so I'm just showing you how I do it and um, once I get it to where I want it that I go back to my needle and applique up the side and then I'll go back and stuff, and then applique, stuff, and then applique. So that's my process. All right, so I definitely sped this part up <laughs> because it took me a while to get the cording in the right spot. And I'm using um, just a random piece of thread like that. And um, I'm just going to position my cording where I want it. So I want it to look like it's tied on. So I'm just trying to maneuver this cording the best I can. And I tried several different ways and I found this way was the easiest, so. Yeah, so I'm using the picture for reference, and on the picture it has her little tie back behind her ankle. So I um, maneuvered the cording in a way to make it look like it's going to tie behind her ankle. So that's what I'm doing here, and then um, I'm just going to tie it into a bow the best I can. And I made the cording just a little bit longer than it suggested. Um, you could always, you know, trim the cording later. But I, I wanted to have enough to make a decent bow. So. I can't remember how long the cording is. At the moment. But. It says, it says in the instructions. So. If you are following along and making this kit with me. Then um, follow those instructions. For the length and then I like to add at least another inch or so to that length just to play with and here I am trying to get this bow <laughs> the way I want it there we go that is so cute so I just maneuver it the best I can and play around with it get it to where you want it I think that's super cute this same method applies for both feet and um, I'm gonna use free check in this project um, I like to use free check for all kinds of things and I decided that I'm just gonna put just a little bit of free check on the knot part so that um, it dries it dries clear but it hardens so um, yeah, so it doesn't move around. It's totally optional, totally up to you if you want to do that. But now we're going to add the foot and the leg onto the stocking. And I'll show you. I just honestly, I follow the dotted outline 
So, um, so first, oh, I forgot to add the little slipper. <laughs> I was like, shoot, I need to put this on. So this is what it looks like completely on. And now we're going to attach it to the stocking. And again, I'm following the dotted lines on the stocking. And her dress is going to cover the top of the legs so you won't see it. Okay, now we have that done. I'm gonna do the other one, just how we did it before. It is a little bit different. The bow is in a slightly different area, but I want it to be in the same general area. So I still aimed for um, the left side to match. And I am using the picture as reference and I did use fray check on the knots on this one too. Now we're gonna work on the skirt. And I actually went ahead and added the beads to the skirt. It's just like the beads on the tree. So if you missed the previous tutorial, check out those videos. I'll, I'll have them linked somewhere, either in the description box or at the end of the video. So the beads are the same um, the way I did them. So make sure to check out that video. So I'm going to applique the skirt on here. And we're not stuffing it. And I'm just going to applique up until the legs and then I'm gonna leave the legs alone so you'll see what I mean in a second okay so see how I don't have appliques around the legs that's what I meant um, and then I'm gonna grab these little leaves and we're gonna prep these for the little flowers that will go on top you can see the little outline of the flower and we're just gonna stick them alongside these beads here We're going to applique this and then we're going to add the little flowers. Okay, so I'm just showing you how I'm adding these little leaves. I'm just going through the back because the back's not stuffed, so it's fine to go through both layers. And I'm using the same color, same color green as the felt. So I'm tacking it on the top and I'm going to tack it on the bottom. Just putting a few tacks on the top first. So I want to make sure it's really secure before we add those little flowers. And I don't show up, but I do add a little tack on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to do the rest of these little leaves. And now we're going to add little flowers on top. Luckily, these flowers are rather simple. We are just adding them with a bead and sequin, nothing else. We're going to do this with all four flowers. And I really like the beads sequins that came in the kit. Um, I've heard a lot of people have um, issues with the sequins in particular that come with a kit. And, um, you know, there's uh, many options out there for sequins. So I did the wings ahead of time. Um, a lot of the things that go into the wings are very similar to the to the things that we've been doing. So, And um, if you haven't seen any of the other tutorials, there are two previous ones to this one. Make sure to check out the playlist in the description box. Right now I'm just positioning the wings so that you can see the rest of the body. And I like to place a couple of pins so that it doesn't move while I applique. And these wings are not stuffed. They will be flat. Okay, how cute are the wings? So notice how um, I left that, I left this part kind of not applique down just to give it some type of dimension. That's optional. You can always applique the whole thing. So here's her bodice. And this is a simple applique. 
So we're just going to pin it down and applique it. And it does have a little bit of stuffing in there. Don't stuff too much because there's going to be things that go on top. And then here's the back of her head. We're going to be doing a lot of layering for her head and her face. So there's that piece. And here's her face. I want to give you a close-up on her face. I know a lot of people are nervous about doing faces. I feel like I've, do, I've done them enough to where I'm a little more confident in doing faces. Notice how many colors there are. And then the white iris is the, is a French knot. And you've got at least three different browns, a couple of pinks for her lips. And there's her beautiful face. I'm going to add blush later. But for now, I'm just going to add her face onto here and stuff it very okay now that we have her face done and applique we're gonna do uh, her blush now and I know that faces intimidate intimidate you so just make sure that you go really slow and um, lots of practice so right here I'm just taking a q-tip and I'm just using um, personal blush that I have in my makeup bag and I chose kind of a deeper red because um, I feel like it would, it, it, it's really cute on her complexion. She's a very, um, very creamy skin. So I wanted something a little bit more dark. Um, if you want to do a brighter blush, that's fine too. So I'm just showing you how I do my blush. And here is a section of her hair that we're going to put right here. And, um, I feel like the hair and, um, all the hair elements um, have several layers on them so just make sure that you go slow um, that part is stuffed so we're just going to do the braid the hair braid now so I'm just taking all of the floss that's required okay, I'm also gonna grab my instructions so I have an idea of what I'm doing <laughs> The instructions um, themselves are, um, I find them to be rather hard to understand, so I, I think a visual will be very helpful for, for you. So I'm just measuring out the required number of um, embroidery thread, um, which is a lot. <laughs> we're using a lot. So we're using 10 inch lengths here, and I'm just looking at the instructions seeing how many I need so I'm just gonna cut out another 10 inches and another one and these are approximate they're not exact so we're gonna use these uh, to braid So I'm just going to twist them. And this is kind of like a, a rope deal, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you've ever done any rope, rope braids, it's very similar. So it's very similar to making cording too. So I'm just um, positioning it to where I want it. And um, I did um, cut a little bit more than I needed, which is fine. I'd rather have too much. But for now, I just took a pin and, and um, I took a couple of pins and positioned it where I wanted it. And I'm going to take the exact same color thread and I'm going to go through and tack it down right here by her face. I'm going to tack it down really, really well. And then I'm going to actually go back and trim the access on this end so that it doesn't stick out. And I believe there is a flower that sits right around here. So we're going to cover this up later with some flowers in her hair. So right now I'm just securing it really, really good before I decide to go back in. We're going to trim this. And be careful here. You don't want to snip any felt or anything so that's the general idea here she looks like <laughs> she looks silly with all these pins sticking out of her head so I'm just I'm showing you I'm going kind of back and forth in and out of this braid and um, I'm going in the same general direction as the braid so you won't be able to see the tack down stitches as clearly and I'm literally gonna go all the way around and tack down 
enough to where it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't look like it's being like it's too flat I want it to look like it's got some body so I'm just gonna um, finish going around off camera and um, then we're gonna skip to the beads here so um, as you can see I am adding a ton of beads I actually came up I knotted the end and then I came up from the back and here I am adding beads to my thread And I'm using um, I'm using the needle to kind of weave the beads in and out of her braid, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna I'm going in and out of her braid, and I'm trying to do it as evenly as possible. And I'm always referring back to the picture that it comes with. Okay, so here's what we have so far super cute I'm actually gonna go um, tack this down right around here and I'm just trying to move it maneuver it so it doesn't look awkward I want it to look even like a little wreath around her head and I'm gonna secure this really really good go beautiful it looks so cute so far and we are gonna put a little flower there so that's gonna be hidden but right now we are looking really good with the beads and this is the trickiest part I feel like on this particular stocking so if you're struggling you're not the only one <laughs> I've struggled with this before I've made this kit before and I struggled with it so here I am, I'm going back around and I'm tacking down a little bit more of the hair. And I'm, I'm tacking down some of the beads with it. So it's not going anywhere. And I don't compromise the volume either. I, I just put enough in there to, so that it doesn't move around. Or if something gets caught on it, it's not gonna just like, you know, yank and come apart, so it's pretty sturdy. So once I'm done with my tack down stitches, I will double knot them in the back. And then we're gonna move on to the next element. Okay, so I am placing all of the little leaves that you see here, and I'm just doing a little tack down stitch on the bottom, and the tip of it will stick up Going through, I'm going through to the back first, and then I'll come up, and then um, go through the bottom of the, of the little tiny leaf, and then come back down again. And for this, I'm actually using one strand, possibly two strands of black. Um, that way it looks like the end of the leaf goes all the way to the end because the embroidery on there is black so there's all four leaves and um, I am using the picture on the kit because it doesn't really t I mean it sort of tells me in the instructions but honestly I'm just using the kit um, for placement so now I am going to put the flowers on The flowers almost look like earrings. <laughs> we are going to secure each flower with a bead and sequin. And then there's a couple of petals there that have um, a little tiny of embroidery. And then we're going to put them on with sequins. And I'll do the rest off camera. Okay, so this is what we have so far. She is looking so darling. Oh my goodness. I really like the way her hair turned out. Here is the bodice of her dress. I already embroidered the neckline. And we're gonna place it on here. I'm 
just gonna pin it and then we're gonna applique it. And it does require a little bit of stuffing, not too much. We don't want her to be plump. <laughs> she is a dancer after all. <laughs> so now that we have that applique, we're gonna work on her arms. And um, her arms go on top of the wings and then we have the sleeve that connects them. I already went ahead and embroidered and beaded this part of it. And the same rules apply for the arms as they do with the legs earlier. So um, I'm just going to tack down the arm first where the dotted lines are, leave the rest of the arm hanging. And then um, with the sleeve, I added uh, stuffing to the sleeve and I kept actually the, the cuff of the sleeve open. So I started at the bottom and went all the way around and stopped and then left the cu cuff open. And here I am adding more beads um, to her arm in a bracelet form, which I thought was super cute. And I'm just a little, I'm, I'm wrapping it around her arm. And I'm tacking it down with a few stitches here. Very cute. I'm just gonna hide this and cut it off. Perfect. Okay, there's her little beaded bracelet and now we're gonna move on to the petals of her dress. And um, I decided to applique the petals up on top instead of on the bottom. I think they, I, I personally thought they looked better that way. I believe the instructions say you need to applique them on the bottom so um, it's really up to you however you want to do it. Um, this is just how I ended up doing it. I thought it ended up really cute this way. So Once we have those... Okay, so see how, um, because I applied it on the bottom, the petal kind of... Um, fluffs up a little bit. So with each petal, the, the dress becomes more and more full. And we're only applicating the top of the petals and we're leaving the rest hanging. And they stack just like so. Now we're adding a little belt and her little uh, leaves and I believe there's a, a red flower that goes here. We're going to add. And here's the red flower. And now we're going to add the little bow that goes underneath it. Uh, I'm just going to push my needle through the bottom as close as I can to the flower and we're going to just tack it down right here and um, once we have that tacked down we can position it how we want it um, I was having a hard time <laughs> having a hard time with this bow because I didn't want to be maneuvered the way I wanted it to be so Okay, so once I have this secured with a couple of tacked on stitches, then I can kind of rearrange the bow how I want to, and then we're going to move on to the next part. Super cute. Okay, so now we're going to put the wand together, and I'm just going to take a piece of pipe cleaner, and we're going to use that as the wand stick. Um, I like to applique part of it closed and then add, and then add it later and then um, close it up. So we're going to put the star on here, which is very similar to the star on the tree. And I'm just going to secure it with a pin so that I can sew it together. And I'm using yellow because yellow is the um, is the color that's on top. So I am just maneuvering around the uh, pipe cleaner while trying to go through the brown, and then we're gonna close up the the little star here, and then we're gonna put it right there. Okay, so first we're gonna add. 
um, another um, pink bow. And you can make it as long or as short as you want. Um, if, if you make it a little bit longer, it's easier to put the bow together. And then you can trim it later. But I was able to do it. And I'm just going to um, secure it with some free check so it doesn't move around. Again, the free check is totally optional. Um, I like free check just because it's easy, convenient, and I know that it'll harden my thread so the bow, the knots don't go anywhere. So and I really like the way the bow turned out. So we're going to add that and then we're going to applique it onto here. I just put it um, at the points of the star and then a little a couple of tack down stitches on the actual stick itself. And now that the front is done, we're going to line this stocking. And I use the back as a template. And I buy all of my lining separately. Um, the kits do not come with extra felt for lining your stocking. So if you want to line your stocking with felt, you can go to your local craft store and pick up um, regular felt by the yard. And I usually buy mine by the yard. So, um yeah, so here I am just um, lining it up, and I like to give myself a little bit of room. So I'm going to go pin this, and then um, we're going to trim the access because I don't want it to go over the edge. So, okay, before I sew in the lining, I like to add the, the, the hang tap, and this just gives it a really nice clean finish. So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to add, I'm going to start, by adding the tab and then I'm just going to keep going um, with the lining so here I am starting right at the tab edge and um, I'm just going to go around with the green because the green is the main front color and I want it to match the front color just in case um, a stitch accidentally goes through, through the top it won't like be you know it won't stick out like a sore thumb so so I'm using the same color green as the front felt that came with the kit. And I'm just going to go all the way around. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. That uh, tells me that you uh, like these types of videos. And um, it tells YouTube that you want to see more. So um, also, if, you, if this is your first time here, um, subscribe to my channel. It's completely free. I do a bunch of... Uh, these types of tutorials as well as um, the stuff that goes behind my Etsy shop. Um, it's been quite busy here uh, with with the new addition to our family. So um, I'm hoping to add more videos on my Etsy shop soon. And um, I'm working on um, putting together a, um, a housing video. For those of you that have been following along... Um, we are doing um, more work on our house, but we have stopped for, for now. So I'm um, just putting together the first video of a set of videos. So once we start actually working on our house, we'll have more. So anyway, that's what this beautiful stocking looks like, completely finished. And I'm, I'm just so excited to show you this stocking because I've actually been wanting to do this one for quite a while. Um, this stocking was one of the first stockings I actually made for a family member. And she still has it even now, even now. So um, this is just the cupcake name tag that goes along with the stocking. And I just, um, I'm going to add the name later. But for now, I'm just showing you what it looks like put together. We are stuffing this. So if you add a name, add it first and then um, put the backing on. So um, here's the little cording that goes in there. And I already tacked it down, so it's not going to go anywhere. And then it's just going to hang right there. So I'm just going to stick it on this bead and sequin for now and add the name later. So whoever decides to purchase it can. Um, I believe this one's already been sold. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. And I really appreciate all of your views and comments and um, all the suggestions. So um, stay tuned for my next video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.